Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. When you were born again in Christ Jesus, you've got everything in you that you need, and the rest of the Christian life is learning how to rest in what Jesus has already done. We already have these things, and it was just really about resting in the finished works of Jesus. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a subject that I call You've Already Got It. I'm basically just talking about how that everything you will ever need, I mean, in the future, in the past, present, anything, is already accomplished through Jesus, and it's not a matter of getting God to move in your life. It's a matter of you appropriating what God has already provided. Now, this is the beginning, I think, of my fifth week of teaching on this, and I've still got a couple of weeks to go. So uh, I've already covered a lot of material. If you've missed any of this, I've got a book entitled You Already Got It. We've seen a lot of miracles happen in people's lives, miracles of healings, miracles of people just beginning to have a better, improved relationship with God once they understand what God has already provided. I've got this book not only in English, but in Spanish, we've got these study guides that I also have this in English and Spanish, and this is nothing but the same material that's in the book reformatted so that you can teach other people. And I really would encourage you to share this with other people. First of all, you need to receive it yourself. These study guides will help you to really grab hold of this, but it's specifically designed to help you teach other people. And then we also have DVDs that were taken from television and also CDs. So as I said, I've already covered a lot of material. I hadn't got time to go back through it. But let me use over here in Colossians and just use uh, some verses out of the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians and the book of Ephesians are companion teachings. Now, I could spend a lot of time verifying that, but if you read Ephesians and you read Colossians, they are very similar. Paul is the author of both of them. And matter of fact, he even mentions, read the uh, letter that I sent Uh, to the people of Galatia, I think is the way it was phrased. But if you study it out, these were companion letters. He basically was writing the same thing to two different groups of Christians, but it was just put in a little bit different words. The first three chapters of Ephesians are all about what you already have in Christ. The second three chapters are all about how this works out and how you live towards other people and how you live. Well, Colossians is basically the same thing. It's only four chapters, but the first half is exactly the same. They are companion teachings just put in different words. I've already used the book of Ephesians, especially chapter 1, where it says in Ephesians 1, 3, that you're already blessed with all spiritual blessings. Then I used the prayer that was at the end of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 14 through the end of the chapter where Paul didn't pray that you'd get something new, but rather that you'd just get a revelation of what Jesus has already done for you. And I've already talked about that. Basically, this same thing is being done here in Colossians, but it's put in different words. So let me read this out of Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to start with verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, talking about their love and their faith, UNTO THE LORD, IT SAYS, WE DO NOT CEASE TO PRAY FOR YOU AND TO DESIRE THAT YOU MIGHT BE FILLED WITH THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIS WILL IN ALL WISDOM AND SPIRITUAL UNDERSTANDING. AGAIN, THIS GOES ALONG VERY CLOSELY WITH EPHESIANS CHAPTER 1, VERSES 14 THROUGH 18, WHERE HE'S PRAYING THAT THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING WOULD BE ENLIGHTENED TO SEE WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. THEN IN VERSE 10, THAT YOU MIGHT WALK WORTHY OF THE LORD. THE RESULTS OF UNDERSTANDING WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE IS IT WILL CAUSE YOU TO WALK WORTHY OF THE LORD. NOW, I'VE GOT TO INSERT THIS BECAUSE MANY PEOPLE TEACH THAT GOD LOVES YOU PROPORTIONAL TO YOUR PERFORMANCE AND THAT WHEN YOU DO GOOD, WELL, THEN GOD WILL GIVE YOU GOOD, ETC. AND IT'S A PERFORMANCE-BASED RELATIONSHIP. THIS ISN'T SAYING THIS. THIS IS SAYING THAT IN VERSE 9, IF YOU UNDERSTAND WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE, IF YOU HAVE THE WISDOM AND UNDERSTANDING OF WHAT JESUS HAS ALREADY DONE, THAT WILL CAUSE YOU TO WALK WORTHY OF THE LORD. IN OTHER WORDS, ANOTHER WAY OF SAYING THIS IS THAT HOLINESS IS NOT THE ROOT, BUT IT'S THE FRUIT OF SALVATION. IT'S THE BYPRODUCT OF YOU UNDERSTANDING WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE. A PERSON WHO IS NOT LIVING A GODLY LIFE 
IS A PERSON WHO DOESN'T UNDERSTAND WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR THEM. IF YOU EVER REALLY GET A REVELATION OF HOW AWESOME GOD IS AND WHAT WE DESERVE, THAT WE DESERVE TO GO TO HELL, IF WE JUST GOT WHAT WE DESERVED, I DON'T CARE WHO YOU ARE, THE BEST ONE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, YOU DO NOT DESERVE THE MERCIES AND THE GRACE OF GOD. IT IS UNEARNED, UNMERITED, UNDESERVED FAVOR. IF YOU UNDERSTOOD THAT AND THEN YOU GOT A REVELATION OF ALTHOUGH WE DON'T DESERVE IT, WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR US, IT WOULD MAKE YOU SO THANKFUL THAT I GUARANTEE YOU, ACCORDING TO THIS SCRIPTURE, YOU WOULD WALK WORTHY OF THE LORD. WE DO THIS BIBLE STUDY LIVE CAST EVERY NIGHT, AND CARRIE PICKETT, WHO'S THE VICE PRESIDENT OF OUR MINISTRY, uh, SHE HOSTS THIS, AND WE WERE TALKING TOGETHER, AND THERE WERE QUESTIONS THAT CAME IN ABOUT HEAVEN AND WHAT THINGS WERE GOING TO BE LIKE IN HEAVEN. AND ONE OF THE QUESTIONS THAT CAME IN, PEOPLE SAID, ARE WE GOING TO STILL HAVE A FREE WILL IN HEAVEN? AND, YOU KNOW, I HADN'T REALLY THOUGHT OF THAT MUCH, AND SO THIS WAS JUST OFF THE CUFF. AND I SAID, WELL, I DON'T THINK THAT WE ARE GOING TO LOSE OUR FREE WILL. I MEAN, GOD CREATED US UNIQUE FROM ALL OTHER CREATION IN THE SENSE THAT WE HAD THIS FREE WILL. AND EVEN THOUGH IT COST US DEARLY AND PLUNGED THE ENTIRE WORLD INTO SIN, I BELIEVE THAT GOD HOLDS A FREE WILL SACRED. I DON'T THINK THAT WE'RE GOING TO LOSE OUR FREE WILL. WELL, THIS BROUGHT UP THE QUESTION THAT IF WE STILL HAVE A FREE WILL, DOES THAT MEAN THAT WE CAN SIN AND WE CAN REBEL AGAINST GOD IN HEAVEN? AND AGAIN, THIS IS SOMETHING THAT I HADN'T REALLY THOUGHT ABOUT MUCH, BUT HERE'S THE WAY THAT I ANSWERED THIS, AND I'VE THOUGHT ABOUT IT EVEN LAST NIGHT WHEN I WENT HOME AND THIS MORNING. I BELIEVE THAT WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN AND WHEN WE SEE OUR RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS TO GOD. I DON'T HAVE THE WORDS TO DESCRIBE. I DON'T WANT TO SPEND THE WHOLE PROGRAM TODAY DEALING WITH THIS, BUT IF YOU COULD JUST IMAGINE WHEN YOU SEE THE GLORY OF GOD, THE PURITY OF GOD, THE HOLINESS OF GOD, YOU ARE GOING TO INSTINCTIVELY, INTUITIVELY, INSTANTLY REALIZE YOUR UNWORTHINESS. AGAIN, MY RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD STARTED THIS WAY, THAT I WAS, a, I was BORN AGAIN WHEN I WAS EIGHT, BUT WHEN I WAS 18, I HAD BECOME A RELIGIOUS PHARISEE THINKING THAT GOD OWED ME SOMETHING BECAUSE I WAS LIVING A HOLY LIFE. I WAS LIVING HOLIER THAN ANYBODY ELSE THAT I KNEW. AND I HAD BECOME A MODERN-DAY RELIGIOUS PHARISEE, AND I WAS SMUG AND uh, PROUD OF MY HOLINESS. AND THEN ON MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, GOD SHOWED UP. AND I MEAN GOD IN ALL OF HIS GLORY SHOWED UP. I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD. AND WHEN I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD, I JUST INSTANTLY KNEW THAT ALL OF MY RIGHTEOUSNESS WAS HIS FILTHY RAGS. AND MAN, I REPENTED IN SACKCLOTH AND ASHES. I EXPECTED GOD TO JUDGE ME, AND INSTEAD OF JUDGMENT, I HAD MERCY AND LOVE. AND THE LOVE OF GOD JUST BEGAN TO FLOW IN MY LIFE. AND THE THING THAT MADE IT SO AWESOME WAS BECAUSE FOR THE FIRST TIME IN MY LIFE, I REALIZED I DIDN'T DESERVE IT. AND I THINK THAT WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN AND WHEN WE SEE THE GLORY OF GOD AND WE SEE OTHER PEOPLE, YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT EVERYBODY'S GOING TO APPEAR BEFORE GOD, AND THE CHRISTIANS WILL BE APPEARING BEFORE GOD FOR REWARDS, BUT OUR ACTIONS STILL ARE GOING TO BE WEIGHED. OVER IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 3, IT'S TALKING TO CHRISTIANS, AND IT SAYS THAT IF WE'VE BUILT ON THIS FOUNDATION OF JESUS, GOLD, SILVER, AND PRECIOUS STONES, THEN WHEN THE FIRE IS PUT TO IT, THOSE THINGS WILL ENDURE. BUT IF YOU'VE BUILT WOOD, HAY, AND STUBBLE, THOSE THINGS WILL BE BURNED UP. AND IT SAYS, YET YOU WILL BE SAVED, YET SO AS BY FIRE. I DON'T THINK CHRISTIANS ARE GOING TO BE PUNISHED BECAUSE OUR PUNISHMENT WAS PLACED UPON JESUS, BUT WE ARE GOING TO BE TRIED, AND THERE'S GOING TO BE A LOT OF STUFF IN OUR LIFE THAT WAS FLESH, THAT WASN'T GODLY. AND EVEN THOUGH WE AREN'T GOING TO BE REJECTED AND PUNISHED, I BELIEVE THAT WE WILL SEE THAT, MAN, WE DON'T DESERVE THIS GOODNESS OF GOD. AND WE WILL SEE THE UNGODLY JUDGED, AND MANY OF THEM WILL HAVE LIVED GREATER LIVES, HAVE DONE BETTER THINGS THAN WHAT YOU DID, AND YET THEY WILL BE REJECTED NOT BASED ON THEIR PERFORMANCE, BUT BASED ON THEIR ACCEPTANCE OR REJECTION OF JESUS. AND SO WHEN WE SEE PEOPLE WHO HAVE LIVED A BETTER LIFE THAN US, WHO HAVE DONE GREATER THINGS THAN US, CONDEMNED TO HELL, AND WE REALIZE THAT, MAN, I DESERVE THE SAME THING, AND YET WE EXTEND, GOD EXTENDS MERCY TOWARDS US. EVEN THOUGH I BELIEVE THAT WE WILL STILL HAVE A FREE WILL, ONCE WE SEE THE GOODNESS AND THE GLORY AND THE GREATNESS OF GOD, RECOGNIZE WE DON'T DESERVE IT, 
And our own heart will tell us that, man, we deserve judgment as much as any of these other people. And yet God extends His love towards us and says, well done, how good and faithful servant. He burns up all of the dross, keeps all of the good, and then compliments us and gives us crowns and glory. When we see that, even though I believe we will have a free will, I think that eternity won't be long enough to thank God and to praise God for our salvation. So again, these, these are andeology type things. I can't say thus saith the Lord. I've never looked at it this way, but I believe that we are going to have a free will, but we will willfully serve God once we see His glory, our, what we deserved, and yet the goodness and the grace of God extended towards us on an unearned basis. I believe, like it says over in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, The grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men. And in verse 12, it says, It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Once we get this revelation and fully understand what God has done for us, we are willfully, intentionally going to serve God throughout all eternity because we have, we understand all things and we have things now finally in the right perspective. So I said all of that to say that in verse 9, it talks about that we get our eyes open and we understand the wisdom and the knowledge of what God has done for us. And then in verse 10, the results of that will be that we will walk worthy. If you are living in sin, if you are struggling with sin and, and failing God, and I'm not talking about just because we're human, we fail to, you know, be the perfect person that we're supposed to be, etc. But I'm talking about people who are going out and doing things that you know are wrong. You're caught in a cycle of sin and stuff. You don't understand what God has done for you. You don't have a revelation of His goodness and love, or I guarantee you, you would wind up giving up bubble gum if you thought that that would please God. I mean, you would sacrifice anything. There would be nothing. The love of Christ, Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the love of Christ constrains us. Once you understand love and how much God loves you, your actions will line up. It also says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, that faith works by love. Once you understand the love of God, that it is unmerited, it's undeserved, you don't deserve it, it will just cause you to start living a godly life. And I've, I've used a lot of scriptures to say that. Uh, I can also testify my own personal experience as I just gave testimony that, man, when I saw my relative unworthiness compared to God, I expected judgment, but when love came instead of judgment, the grace of God was poured out on me instead of punishment. Man, I, that has now been 52 years ago. I have never gotten over it. It totally changed my life. I never plan on getting over it. I can testify that if you ever understand the love of God, it'll cause you to live holy. Another passage of Scripture that verifies this is 1 John chapter 3, where it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are ye the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Notice that when you see God as He really is, then you will be like Him. People that are not acting like God have not seen God as He really is. And then the next verse says, And every man, every man, not many, not most, not a lot, this says, Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. If you are not living a pure life, and again, I'm, I'm making allowances that we are uh, not perfect, that we only know in part all of us are growing, I'm not saying that you never make a mistake, that everything is perfect in your life. None of us are perfect. But I'm saying a person who is uh, living a life that you know is in rebellion to God. You are caught in sins and in habits. You do things that your own heart condemns you and you don't want to do it, and yet you find yourself doing it. For a person like that, you have not got this hope in Him. You do not really understand how much God loves you. Praise God. Man, these are awesome statements. I was really headed somewhere else today, 
BUT I THINK THAT THIS IS A DIVINE RABBIT TRAIL THAT GOD GOT ME OFF ON SPEAKING DIRECTLY TO MANY OF YOU THAT ARE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM. MANY OF YOU ARE TRYING TO LIVE A BETTER LIFE. YOU KNOW THERE'S THINGS IN YOUR LIFE THAT NEED TO CHANGE AND YOU JUST SEEM TO BE FAILING EVERY TIME ABOUT HOW DO I OVERCOME THIS? THE WAY YOU OVERCOME IT IS TO GET A REVELATION OF GOD'S GREAT LOVE AND OF WHAT HE'S ALREADY DONE FOR YOU. AND IF YOU COULD EVER SEE WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR YOU AND UNDERSTAND THAT YOU DIDN'T DESERVE IT. IT WASN'T BECAUSE YOU WERE SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER LOVELY SO GOD LOVED YOU. NO, GOD LOVED YOU BECAUSE HE IS LOVE, NOT BECAUSE YOU WERE LOVELY. IF YOU COULD EVER UNDERSTAND THAT AND GET THAT HOPE AND and SEE HIM AS HE IS AND SEE YOURSELF AS YOU ARE WITHOUT HIM, JUST THE PART OF YOU, YOU DON'T DESERVE IT. IF YOU EVER GOT THAT REVELATION, YOU WOULD LIVE HOLIER ACCIDENTALLY THAN YOU'VE EVER LIVED ON PURPOSE BEFORE. HOLINESS IS A FRUIT AND NOT THE ROOT OF SALVATION. SO BACK TO COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 1. THIS IS WHAT HE'S SAYING. HE'S PRAYING THAT YOU WOULD UNDERSTAND WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. IT WOULD CAUSE YOU TO LIVE HOLY. THEN IN VERSE 11, YOU WOULD BE STRENGTHENED WITH ALL MIGHT ACCORDING TO HIS GLORIOUS POWER UNTO ALL PATIENCE AND LONG SUFFERING WITH JOYFULNESS. IN VERSE 12, GIVING THANKS UNTO THE FATHER WHICH HATH. NOW AGAIN, THE REASON I'M USING THESE VERSES IS TO SHOW YOU THAT THIS IS EVERYTHING IS IN THE PAST TENSE. HE'S NOT SAYING IN VERSE 12, GIVING THANKS UNTO THE FATHER WHICH CAN MAKE US MEET TO BE PARTAKERS OF THE INHERITANCE OF THE SAINTS IN LIFE. THE WORD MEET HERE IS TALKING ABOUT CAPABLE OR ABLE TO PARTAKE OF WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR US. IT'S NOT SAYING THAT GOD CAN DO THAT. IT SAYS THAT HE HAS DONE IT. GIVE THANKS UNTO THE FATHER WHICH HATH MADE US MEET, ABLE, CAPABLE TO PARTAKE OF THE INHERITANCE OF THE SAINTS IN LIGHT. DID YOU KNOW THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD IS REAL. YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD HAS POWER. YOU BELIEVE THAT WHEN YOU BECOME A BELIEVER THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU AN INHERITANCE. YOU ARE NOW HIS CHILD AND ALL OF THESE THINGS BELONG UNTO YOU. NOW, THERE'S SOME DISAGREEMENT. THERE ARE SOME DENOMINATIONS THAT TEACH NONE OF OUR INHERITANCE COMES IN THIS LIFE. WE HAVE TO WAIT UNTIL WE GO TO HEAVEN. AND SO IF THAT'S WHAT YOU BELIEVE, WELL, THEN OBVIOUSLY YOU AREN'T GOING TO EXPERIENCE ANY OF IT BECAUSE YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE IN ORDER TO RECEIVE. BUT I WOULD SAY THAT PROBABLY THE MAJORITY, OR AT LEAST HALF OF THE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, YOU BELIEVE THAT AS A BELIEVER, AS A CHRISTIAN, YOU'VE GOT AN INHERITANCE THAT GOD WANTS TO BLESS YOU, BUT THE MAJORITY OF YOU BELIEVE THAT IT IS SOMETHING THAT IS AVAILABLE, BUT IT IS NOT YOURS RIGHT NOW. YOU HAVE TO DO SOMETHING. YOU HAVE TO EARN IT. THIS IS SAYING THAT YOU SHOULD GIVE THANKS THAT GOD HAS ALREADY MADE YOU MEET, CAPABLE, ABLE TO PARTAKE OF YOUR INHERITANCE. THIS ISN'T SOMETHING THAT'S RESERVED FOR HEAVEN. IT'S NOT SOMETHING THAT WILL HAPPEN IF YOU JUST DO EVERYTHING RIGHT, DOT EVERY I, CROSS EVERY T, IF YOU LIVE HOLY AND DO ALL THIS. NO, YOU'VE GOT IT. GOD HAS ALREADY GIVEN YOU THIS. IT IS NOT A MATTER OF GOD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER RELEASING. LIKE, LET ME TAKE SOME uh, SPECIFIC EXAMPLES LIKE HEALING. IT IS NOT A MATTER OF YOU PRAYING AND DOING ENOUGH AND THEN GOD RELEASES HEALING. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT HEALING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IT'S A MATTER OF YOU RELEASING, APPROPRIATING WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY GIVEN YOU, NOT TRYING TO GET GOD TO GIVE YOU SOMETHING YOU DON'T HAVE. SEE, THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THIS TEACHING THAT I'M DOING IS ABOUT. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. YOU'VE ALREADY HAD GOD GIVE YOU EVERYTHING AND YOU JUST NEED TO GIVE THANKS UNTO THE FATHER WHICH HATH ALREADY. THAT MEANS IT'S PAST DONE, MADE YOU MEET TO BE PARTAKERS OF THE INHERITANCE OF THE SAINTS IN LIGHT. IN VERSE 13, IT SAYS, WHO HATH DELIVERED US FROM THE POWER OF DARKNESS. NOT IS GOING TO DELIVER US, CAN DELIVER US IF WE WILL APPROACH HIM AND BEG AND PLEAD ENOUGH. NO, HE'S ALREADY DELIVERED US. YOU KNOW, I JUST HAD A WOMAN AT OUR MEETING THIS LAST WEEKEND FROM NIGERIA AND SHE WAS TELLING ME THAT SHE HAD ALL KINDS OF DEMONIC PROBLEMS. SATAN WAS AFFLICTING HER. I MEAN, PHYSICALLY, EMOTIONALLY, THERE WERE PHYSICAL MANIFESTATIONS OF DEMONIC THINGS. AND SHE WAS TELLING ME ABOUT THIS. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT... uh, I'M NOT MAKING THIS AS A BLANKET STATEMENT. I KNOW THAT EVERYBODY'S AN INDIVIDUAL, BUT AS A WHOLE, THE PEOPLE THAT I'VE MET THAT ARE FROM NIGERIA, I'VE NEVER BEEN THERE PERSONALLY, I DON'T KNOW THIS, BUT THE PEOPLE THAT HAVE COME TO MY BIBLE COLLEGE, PEOPLE THAT HAVE CONTACTED ME, IT SEEMS LIKE THAT THE DEMONIC IS MORE MANIFEST IN THEM 
THAN IN MOST PEOPLE THAT I DEAL WITH. WE ACTUALLY HAD ONE WOMAN WHO WAS A BIBLE COLLEGE STUDENT WHO SHE CAME TO ME AND SHE WAS JUST DESPERATE AND ASKED ME TO PRAY FOR HER AND SHE SHOWED ME THESE MARKS ON HER NECK AND ON HER SHOULDERS WHERE SHE WAS CUT AT NIGHT. AND I MEAN, SHE WOULD BLEED. SHE WAS HAVING DEMONIC THINGS ATTACK HER AND SHE WAS JUST DESPERATE AND PANICKED AND SHE ASKED ME TO PRAY WITH HER. AND I SAID, WELL, WHY DON'T YOU JUST PRAY AND DO THIS? AND SHE SAYS, OH, I'VE RESISTED AND IT'S NOT WORKING. I NEED YOUR HELP. AND I SAID, WELL, JAMES 4, 7 SAYS, YOU RESIST THE DEVIL AND HE WILL FLEE FROM YOU. I SAID, YOU HAVEN'T TRULY RESISTED. YOU MIGHT HAVE SAID SOME WORDS, BUT IN YOUR HEART, YOU MUST BE OPERATING IN FEAR INSTEAD OF FAITH BECAUSE HE SAID HE WILL FLEE FROM YOU. YOU DON'T HAVE TO HAVE ME PRAY FOR YOU. AND THIS WOMAN JUST SAID, OH, I'VE TRIED. AND I SAID, LOOK, YOU ARE GIVING THE DEVIL WAY TOO MUCH CREDIT. AND ANYWAY, THIS WENT ON FOR LIKE SIX WEEKS. AND OVER SIX WEEKS, SHE CONTINUED TO HAVE THESE THINGS, BUT SHE STARTED GROWING IN HER UNDERSTANDING AND BASICALLY UNDERSTANDING EXACTLY WHAT THIS SAYS, THAT HE HAS DELIVERED US FROM THE POWER OF SATAN. SATAN CANNOT DO ANYTHING TO YOU WITHOUT YOUR CONSENT AND COOPERATION. MAN, THAT IS ONE HUGE STATEMENT RIGHT THERE. AND I KNOW MANY OF YOU ARE CHOKING AT THIS, BUT IT IS ABSOLUTELY TRUE. GOD IS ALL... IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN, IF YOU HAVE BEEN SAVED BY PUTTING FAITH IN THE LORD JESUS, SATAN'S POWER AND DOMINION IS BROKEN OVER YOU, AND THE ONLY REASON HE'S ABLE TO OPPRESS YOU IS BECAUSE YOU BELIEVE HE HAS POWER. YOU BELIEVE HE'S STRONGER THAN YOU. YOU'VE ACCEPTED A LIE. IF YOU UNDERSTOOD WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. IF YOU KNEW YOUR TRUE AUTHORITY IN CHRIST, YOU COULD RESIST THE DEVIL IN FAITH, KNOWING YOUR POWER AND AUTHORITY, AND SATAN WOULD FLEE FROM YOU. SO ANYWAY, THIS WOMAN THAT I WAS TALKING ABOUT OVER ABOUT A SIX-WEEK PERIOD OF TIME, SHE FINALLY GOT HOLD OF THIS. SHE TOOK AUTHORITY. THE DEVIL QUIT BOTHERING HER. SATAN TRIED TO KILL HER HUSBAND WHO WAS IN NIGERIA. SHE STOOD AND BELIEVED AND HE WAS MIRACULOUSLY RAISED UP. AND SHE CAME BACK AND TOLD ME THAT, YOU KNOW, IN NIGERIA, SATAN IS JUST GIVEN SO MUCH POWER. AND HE DOES EXIST. AND DEMONIC POWERS DO EXIST. AND WITCH DOCTORS DO HAVE POWER, BUT THEY HAVE POWER BECAUSE PEOPLE BELIEVE IN THEM AND ARE INTIMIDATED BY THEM. AND THIS WOMAN TOLD ME, OUR BIBLE COLLEGE STUDENT, THAT THIS IS THE ISSUE FROM HER PERSPECTIVE OF PEOPLE IN NIGERIA THAT THEY HAVE BEEN INTIMIDATED AND AFRAID OF THE DEVIL. AND THIS WOMAN I WAS JUST TALKING TO, SHE WAS TELLING ME THE EXACT SAME THING, THAT SHE HAD HAD ALL OF THESE DEMONIC PROBLEMS, BUT THEN SHE GOT HOLD OF MY TEACHING ON THE AUTHORITY OF THE BELIEVER, AND SHE WAS JUST GIVING PRAISE REPORTS ABOUT HOW IT'S ALREADY OVER. REMEMBER THAT THIS SAYS YOU HAVE BEEN DELIVERED FROM THE POWER OF DARKNESS AND TRANSLATED INTO THE KINGDOM OF HIS DEAR SON. THIS IS NOT SOMETHING THAT CAN HAPPEN THAT IS STILL IN THE FUTURE IF YOU APPROPRIATE ALL OF THESE THINGS. NO, GOD HAS ALREADY GIVEN IT TO YOU. IT'S YOURS. AND IF YOU AREN'T EXPERIENCING THAT VICTORY, IT'S NOT BECAUSE GOD HASN'T GIVEN, IT'S BECAUSE YOU DON'T KNOW THE TRUTH OF WHAT YOU HAVE OR SATAN HAS DISTRACTED YOU AND GOT YOU TO AMPLIFYING AND MAGNIFYING HIM AND GIVING HIM MORE POWER THAN HE DESERVES. THE TRUTH IS YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. MAN, I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, AND I'm, I DIDN'T EVEN GET ANYWHERE CLOSE TO WHERE I WANTED TO GO. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO TUNE IN TOMORROW, AND ALSO, PLEASE GET THIS BOOK ON YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. I TELL YOU, THIS WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE. I REALLY BELIEVE THAT. I'VE HAD MANY TESTIMONIES OF PEOPLE TELLING ME THAT. I'VE GOT CD'S. I'VE GOT DVD'S. I'VE GOT IT IN SPANISH. I'VE GOT A STUDY GUIDE. I'VE GOT A LOT OF DIFFERENT WAYS FOR YOU TO RECEIVE THIS TEACHING. SO PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU ALL OF THE DETAILS AND THEN CALL OR WRITE TODAY AND MAKE SURE YOU JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW FOR THE GOSPEL TRUTH.